deep in the heart of eastern Kentucky, nestled in the rolling hills and misty hollows, lies a history of darkness and witchcraft that has long been kept secret from the rest of the world. For centuries, the people of this remote corner of Appalachia have whispered tales of witches who roam the woods and practice their dark arts under cover of night. Legend has it that the witches of eastern Kentucky were descendants of a coven that was formed in the early 1700s by a group of Scottish settlers who had fled persecution in their homeland. They made their way to America and settled in the wilds of Kentucky where they found the land rich with natural resources and a culture of superstition and fear. As the years went by, the witches of eastern Kentucky became more and more powerful, honing their skills in the dark arts and gathering new followers to their cause. They were said to have the power to control the weather, summon demons, and even raise the dead from their graves. The local people lived in fear of the witches and many believed that they were responsible for strange disappearances and unexplained deaths that occurred in the area. It was said that the witches would kidnap young children and use them in their dark rituals, sacrificing them to their pagan gods. Despite the fear and suspicion that surrounded the witches of Eastern Kentucky, there were those who still sought their services. The witches were said to be able to cure illnesses, grant wishes, and even bring about love and fertility. But those who sought their help did so at their own peril. For the witches were known to demand a heavy price for their services, often leaving their clients with a curse or a terrible fate. One such client was a young woman named Anna who lived in a small village on the edge of the woods. Anna had been born with a deformity in her leg which had left her unable to walk without the aid of crutches. She had heard whispers of a powerful witch who lived deep in the woods and who was said to be able to heal any ailment. One moonless night Anna made her way to the edge of the woods, her heart pounding in her chest. She was met by a figure dressed in a dark cloak who led her deep into the woods to a small clearing. There the witch appeared, a tall, imposing figure with green piercing eyes and a voice that seemed to come from the very depths of the earth. The witch listened to Anna's pleas for help and then demanded a heavy price for her services. Anna had nothing to offer but her soul, and so she agreed to the witch's demands. The witch then performed a dark ritual, chanting words that Anna could not understand and placing a curse upon her. For a time, it seemed that the curse had worked. Anna's leg had been healed, and she was able to walk without the aid of crutches. But as time went on, strange things began to happen. Anna's skin turned pale and clammy, and her hair fell out in clumps. She began to experience strange dreams filled with images of the witch and her coven and the terrible deeds they had committed. Anna's family and friends began to avoid her, whispering that she had been cursed by the witches of eastern Kentucky. They feared that she would bring their wrath down upon them, and so they shunned her, leaving her alone in her misery. One 
One night, as Anna lay in bed, she heard a scratching at her window. At first, she thought it was just the wind, but then she saw the silhouette of a figure outside. It was the witch come to claim her soul. Anna tried to scream, but no sound came out. The witch climbed through the window, her eyes glowing with a sinister light. She approached Anna's bed, and as she did, the room grew colder and the air thick with the stench of decay. The witch leaned over Anna, her breath hot against her face, and whispered, You belong to me now, body and soul. Anna tried to resist, but the witch's power was too great. She felt herself slipping away, her mind clouded by the witch's dark magic. From that night on, Anna was never the same. She became a recluse, living in a ramshackle cabin deep in the woods. Her skin grew paler, her eyes hollow and lifeless. She was said to talk to herself and mutter strange incantations as if trying to summon the witch back to her side. The people of the village continued to whisper about Anna and to warn their children to stay away from the woods at night. They knew that the witches of Eastern Kentucky were still out there practicing their dark arts and waiting for the opportunity to claim their next victim. One night, a group of hunters were deep in the woods, tracking a deer that had strayed too far from the safety of the village. As they moved through the undergrowth, they suddenly heard a sound that chilled them to the bone. It was the sound of chanting coming from a clearing just up ahead. The hunters approached cautiously, peering through the trees to see what was happening. What they saw made their blood run cold. In the clearing stood a circle of witches, dressed in black robes, and chanting in a language that was not of this world. In the center of the circle stood a young girl, her eyes wide with fear and her arms bound with ropes. The hunters knew that they had stumbled upon the witch's coven and that they had to act quickly if they were going to save the girl from their clutches. They drew their guns and prepared to fire, but before they could take aim, the witches turned as one and faced them. The witch's eyes blazed with a terrible fury and their hands reached out to summon the power of the dark gods. The hunters fired their guns, but the bullets seemed to have no effect. The witches continued to chant, and the air around them grew thick with an unearthly mist. The hunters knew that they were no match for the witches' power, and so they turned and ran, their hearts pounding with fear, they knew that they had to warn the village of the danger that lay in the woods and to prepare themselves for the inevitable battle that was to come. As the hunters fled, the witches continued to chant, their power growing with each passing moment. They knew that their time was coming and that soon they would have their revenge on the people who had shunned and feared them for so long. And so the witches of Eastern Kentucky continued to practice their dark arts, hidden away in the misty hollows and the deep woods. They waited for the day when they would rise up and claim the rightful place as rulers of this land. And the people of the village lived in fear, knowing that their time was running out. As the days passed, strange things began to happen in the village. Crops failed, Livestock died, and the air was filled with a foul, unnatural odor. 
people reported seeing strange lights and hearing eerie whispers in the dead of night. It was clear that the witches were growing stronger and that their power was spreading beyond the woods. The village elders knew that they had to act quickly if they were going to save their people. They called upon the bravest and most skilled hunters and fighters from the surrounding towns and villages, and together they formed a plan to rid the land of the witches once and for all. The hunters and fighters gathered at the edge of the woods, armed with guns, knives, and the ancient knowledge of their ancestors. They knew that they were facing a great evil, and that they might not all make it back alive. But they were determined to fight, to protect their families and their land, and to rid the world of the witch's darkness forever. As they entered the woods, they could feel the witch's power all around them, pressing in on their minds and bodies like a heavy, suffocating fog. But they pressed on, following the sounds of the witches chanting until they came to the clearing where the coven had been seen. There, they found the witches waiting for them, their eyes glowing with a terrible, unearthly light. The hunters and fighters raised their weapons and the battle began. The air was filled with the sounds of gunfire and a clash of steel on steel as the hunters and fighters battled the witches with all their might. But the witches were not easily defeated. They summoned the power of their dark gods and the earth itself rose up against the hunters and fighters with roots and vines lashing out like serpents. The battle raged on for hours until finally the hunters and the fighters emerged victorious. The witches were vanquished, their power broken, and the land was cleansed of their darkness. But the cost had been great. Many of the hunters and fighters had been lost in the battle, and the village was forever changed. The people knew that they could never forget the witches' dark power, and they erected a shrine in the clearing where the battle had taken place to remind them of the evil that lay hidden in the woods. And so the witches of Eastern Kentucky were defeated, but their legacy lives on. The people of the village continued to tell stories of the witches' power and their terrible deeds, and the children were warned never to tray, stray too far from home, lest they fall prey to the witches' dark magic. But even as the people tried to forget the witch's evil, some would say that their spirits still haunt the woods, waiting for the day when they can rise up again and claim their revenge. And so the people of Eastern Kentucky continue to live in fear, knowing that the witch's darkness could return at any moment, and that they must always be ready to fight for their lives and their land. Mm -hmm.